and welcome to another Ramblog. Possibly the second, possibly the third, depending on which order I put these up. Um, this is going to be a review of the new Netflix documentary, um, uh, sort of covering the uh, Elisa Lam disappearance um, at the Cecil Hotel. Uh, before I get into it, just very quick, I end up, I end up kind of toting the line a little bit with spoilers in this because it's it's frustrating because it's kind of like if you've not seen it and you're interested, and you're just trying to check if if you're looking for a review because you want to know if it's good or worth your time. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's even if you're quite familiar with the case. I think it lays it all out in a really interesting way and also has some points to make about some wider things. But the thing is, that surprised me when I watched it and I don't want anybody to go into it who's looking forward to it knowing those some of the other areas it goes into. Um, so yeah, I would say up top, if you haven't seen it yet and you're interested, maybe don't listen to this until you've seen it. Um, but if you're just kind of casually interested or you're not really particularly fussed about spoilers, things like that, obviously listen away. Um, I don't directly you know, like, outright. I, I do sort of talk about what the documentary is getting at in terms of what its point is and stuff, I suppose, amongst the review. So I guess I do kind of spoil it. Um, so yeah, if you haven't if you haven't got an interest in it or you've already seen it, of course, carry on. But if not, um, I would recommend checking it out before you listen to this. And, and again, I reiterate, it is worth your time. Um, so yeah, here's the rest of my originally recorded review. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Elisa Lam documentary. Um, I keep calling it an Elisa Lam documentary because that's kind of the reason I picked it up out of just interest in that case. But it's actually, uh, let me see, let me, what's its actual, like, what's its official name? Crime Scene, colon, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel. <laughs> that's a terrible name. <laughs> um, and it deals with um, the Elisa Lam case primarily, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, although I, I can't imagine there are many people who spend a lot of time on the internet that don't know, but this is a really unusual vanishing that happened a few years ago where um, I think it was like 2000, I want to say 2013, but I don't remember the exact date, uh, which is crazy because I just watched a four episode documentary, four hour documentary on the subject of it. And the fact that I don't actually know when it happened <laughs> suggests I, uh, I I failed somehow in my, in, as, a, as a viewer there. I've let the creators of that documentary down by not being observant enough. Um, I think, first of all, just as a quick review, like a like a vague, I guess, spoiler-free review, if you don't know what the content of the documentary is, I'd say it's very good. Um, it's one of the better ones that Netflix have done, and I think people should give it a chance. Um, that and uh, I really also liked from last year, yeah, was it last year, the year before, Don't Fuck With Cats. That's another one that I think is actually surprisingly balanced. And while it does, as all of them do, fall victim to some of the Netflix sensationalisms, uh, where, where the Netflix documentaries just sort of over and say sensationalise elements of a case that aren't actually needing of that. Um, I think this one leans less so on that scale, um, so it's a very enjoyable doc. It doesn't feel too much about that. Um, I mean, that's another reason I liked um, Unsolved Mysteries, because that one was almost too free of Netflix's sensationalism like, that they normally do. Like, it's they, the Unsolved Mysteries show that they've put out two seasons of now, I think, um, is, is like, is surprisingly dry for a Netflix product. Um, that, and I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> I, 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 I like my documentaries to have a little bit of spice, but like, I like them to re- mostly endure the, the, the drama from the actual events and not Oh, by exaggerating a point um so yeah this this cecil hotel documentary um I, i'm gonna get into a bit more spoiler territory now so if you don't know what this documentary contains then don't is about um the case of elisa lamb who uh had the the freaky video you've probably already seen it online where the elevator she's in the lit she's in the elevator as they call it in this documentary because they're not british it's a lift i'm gonna call it a lift because i feel more comfortable saying lift she's in the lift and um She's acting all weird. Her arms are moving bizarre. She presses a bunch of buttons. She keeps looking around like she's like being followed. And then this gun was never not seen following that footage. That footage is like the last known footage of this girl. Something like 14 days later, 13 days later, she's found in the water tank of that very hotel. And it's like, how did she get up there? Was the lid closed? And, you know, what's the, what's, what, what, what's, what are the circumstances surrounding this very unusual death? Um, I think the documentary is really good. I think it actually gives a lot more context for things like where the Cecil loca- Hotel is. It, it, this is important information if you're the kind of person who's interested in this case. Because it's sort of stuff that, like, as a passer, as, as a sort of... What's the word I'm looking for here? Like, I, I'm a casual... I've had a casual interest in this case over the years. Like, it's come up on a podcast or two that I've listened to, and I've, you know, watched the video and seen a couple of YouTube videos of people looking at it and saying, like, oh, this is what I think happened. Pretty light 
so I think if you've only ever done that level of you know interest in this case, this documentary has some really like some, what were revelations to me. But of course, the real web sleuthy community have been aware of for years, and like the little things like the context of that the Cecil Hotel is on Skid Row in LA, which I don't think I knew, <laughs> and the context of what exactly that entails and what Skid Row is is all in this documentary as well. Um, they answer a question I didn't realize had an answer, which is why the, the 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 elevator doesn't just go when she steps inside it, which is like a big part of the uh, the, the initial mystery of this video. People were like, "Why does the elevator the, the elevator doors open?" She gets in, she presses buttons for floors, and then it just stays there. This documentary answers why, and apparently the no the answer for why the, the elevator doesn't move has been known for quite some time. And I just again, as a more casual viewer of uh, or in, a person of interest in this in this case, like it's. You know, I had no idea about that. So yeah, it's a really great doc and for a few reasons. So it lays out the wider context of the case. Um, but the main reason I think it's kind of brilliant and what I loved about it was the whole doc, the first three episodes of this four episode doc, the first three episodes was frustrating the shit out of me in one way. And I was like going mad because it just kept giving loads of credence to insane conspiracy theories because one thing that's an interesting element of this case is it kind of took on a life of its own outside of the official investigation much like Don't Fuck With Cats it's kind of a documentary a little bit about web sleuths and the double-edged coin that is yes, you can crowdsource stuff and maybe they have information you don't as a police officer because they can crowdsource stuff that you, you don't have the manpower to do but there's another edge to that coin which is if they decide somebody is guilty of a crime that when it, when it was potentially an accident you could ruin a person's life and that, that kind of happens in this case and it's it's and it's the first three episodes they're kind of giving credence to all these people and their theories and i'm watching it going but they don't have any evidence like they don't have any like they this is speculation at best these people are like making bold statements like this is absolutely foul play i'm convinced it's this i'm convinced it's this. i'm like i just we don't know yet. Like, there's, there's investigations happening. Like, you don't have all the... And I was watching it going, like, why are they giving so much credence to all these crazy theories? And I'll say, I'll, just to give you an insight into how crazy some of these theories is, one of the theories is that she was some sort of tuberculosis super spreader sent into Skid Row to help reduce the homeless population. That's genuinely a theory that existed for a time on this case. It's bonkers. These people are crazy. <laughs> um... So, like, you know, I'm watching it going, like, stop giving credence to these crazies. I'm, I'm loving the rest of the documentary, but I'm just going like that. I'm just frustrated by that. And then the final episode basically pulls the rug under out from under it and just demolishes any argument they ever had and proves exactly why what they did was so dangerous. And it just felt like I got led on a merry little journey. That's a great trick for a doc. Look, as, a, as an actual factual, you know, look at this case, it's probably not the best because to spend three episodes actually giving any credence to clearly false theories to do a dramatic thing, which is reveal how, you know, that's that's not helping anybody who wants to just get the answers to this case, if I'm honest. Um, but it does make it a hell of an entertaining doc because it's got this other point it's trying to make that's nothing to do with Elisa Lam, which is actually a cautionary tale of the web sleuths. And I just I thought that was really clever. Um, so again, if, if you're just looking for the facts, then maybe it's not the place to go. Um, it isn't as, as sensationalized, over sensationalized as other Netflix docs, but I did really enjoy this narrative they wove and the way they did that and the way they pulled the rug out from under me where it, I was like, why? This is, I understand fair and balanced, but stop giving these people your time. And then to go, actually... We've been setting up all of that just to basically make a really important point about how wrong they are, you know, and about how careful you need to be looking at this stuff. Um, the the final conclusion is to as to her death is so supported in evidence, and it's crazy the way they do it as well because they have the there's a point in the doc I think it's at the start of the um uh, I think it's the st- start of the fourth episode which has the police basically lay out their conclusion and the and most not all but a lot of the evidence that got them there and you're going well that seems pretty conclusive and then they just cut to a montage of all these people being like there has to be foul play this guy i'm convinced it's foul play and it's like 
I, I, did, I I've done a few hours of research. I know I I put many hours into this, and I completely disagree with the coroner's report. Like, who are you? It's almost comical because it's just like, yeah, all right, you guy from God knows where with God knows what job. Yeah, you spent a couple hours on the internet, and you know more than a fucking trained coroner and like trained investigators it's one of the most bonkers things you've ever seen but it is amazing how people and i think it is endemic of like a societal problem we have right now just where people think their opinions are the same as facts um i don't know if you can hear my cat meow i'm gonna let him into this room so you can meow me some more um you know and it's so yeah we have this situation now where a lot of people do seem to feel like their opinion is as good as facts like people say it's it's you know it's the anti-maskers it's no different you know people say like i don't think they help well the science says they do well scientists what do they know well they spent years they spent years training and studying um you just reckon something and that's not as valuable <laughs> as information goes um so yeah, I, I I thought it was like a super compelling documentary. Um, I found I found it really satisfying in the end to discover that the documentary was actually like angering me on purpose to to like agree like make almost like bring me round to the to the place I knew I, it should be, which is like that obviously that's just insane and you shouldn't you got to be careful getting too involved in these sorts of things and getting too invested in the conspiracies. And then they have interviews with some of these guys. You know where they're acknowledging that that you know that they look back at those times. Uh, there's one guy in particular who looks back and is like, oh, "It's crazy how into the conspiracy element of it I was." What I rewatched all my videos from the time because he was he's like a YouTuber, like a web sleuth YouTuber guy that was like analyzing the evidence and stuff. And he's like, he he's shocked at how much he was led down that path. Um, but I guess that is, I guess that's the other thing as well. It's the more interesting path. If you're making YouTube videos on a murder, I guess like yeah, oh this doesn't line up. Yeah, that's interesting, I guess. Like, that's, ooh, suspicious. You know, I, I can see how, you know, that creates your dun-dun-dun moment, you know. Um, so you also kind of, at the, the end, showing you them, a couple of them, like, acknowledging how wrong they were and, like, acknowledging how like, the, the path they went down was so wrong is, like, also interesting. So it kind of becomes this interesting documentary that covers a few different things. It covers this this genuine tragedy and tragic accidental death of a, of a young girl from Canada, and it's... And the, and the and the final point the documentary makes is about her. And, and I do want to give them credit for that as well. In the end, when it comes to Elisa, they're very respectful. Like, in the end, like, it, it, there are points when they're, you know, they are to make their point about the web slid sensationalizing elements of the case and making it seem spookier and weirder than it is. But in the end, they lay out the very clear case for a very tragic accidental murder very respectfully. And then the final note is about like the loss of a potential great writer because her blog posts are all really eloquent from before she died. And also like the loss to this family, you know, um, and how tragic it was for them. And it puts a focus on them. And they're barely in it because they only actually, I think, went on camera like once when the LAPD sort of tried to make a plea you know, for, for when when she was missing before she, her body was found about finding her. Um, and they're barely in it at all other than that. But it, like, it does it does take its time to come back around to them. And it's the other thing I like about um, Unsolved Mysteries as well is its respect to the victims. Um, so I think on the whole balance, it's not perfect because, again, it's it, ne- the, a Netflix crime, true crime documentary is never going to be completely free of that. Um, but the stuff it does looking at, like, there's this one guy who's basically life was, his entire life was ruined by these web sleuths, deciding he'd done it when he'd been at the hotel 12 months prior to her and not been back and was out of the country when she went missing and was found and has proof of that and passport stamps and, like, was in a recording studio in, like, Mexico or something. So it's, like, very compellingly obviously not him, but, like, yet there's nothing he could do that this barrage of people just decided he was responsible for this young girl's death. Um, and it really affected his life. And he lost his like email account and his Facebook account and his uh, website, and his YouTube channel. It all just went because people were reporting him ad nauseum to these platforms. And like, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I've been saying a lot recently about like, Oh, it's not cancellation. It's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture. You know, uh, we're not going to cancel someone for being right wing, but if they come out and say something super inappropriate about, I don't know, let's say, the Holocaust, um, 
uh, yeah, that's inappropriate, and you should be flagged for that. And the, it's you're not being cancelled by losing your job on, let's say, a prominent Disney Plus show. Um, for that, that's a consequence of you being a terrible person. <laughs> um, actions have consequences, and uh, consequences are the check and balance to free speech. Yes, you may say what you like, but for the, that right, you must also accept that if you say what you like, there may be consequences to you doing that. Um, and this poor guy who'd done nothing wrong at all other than just being a bit, like, you know, a bit too death metal and black metal for his own good, you know, in terms of, like, his yeah, his videos are kind of creepy. They're about murder and stuff. Yeah, so is absolutely every other black and death metal artist's videos, you know. there are There's a band out there called Cannibal Corpse, people. It's... Uh, <laughs> doesn't mean they're cannibals I mean I, I don't know anything about them maybe they are who knows um, oh god I don't want to start that as, even as a joke but my point is it's a it's a it's a, it's a documentary that tackles a lot of different sides to that coin because it does it tackles these systemic issues in LA and the way they're handling the homeless and the situation with Skid Row that led to the Cecil Hotel becoming quite dilapidate, dilapidated in the first place that deals with the Elisa Lam case and how it was actually a, a real tragedy it deals with the web sleuth community and their sort of um Mm, unwanted <laughs> uh, inclusions in this case and how it was and how that was dangerous and, and then how it potentially affected this other person's life and i don't know it like for a four-part documentary that was just gonna be a true crime I mean, that's a lot of stuff to tackle and i think it does it all really well and balanced and also it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like we're always getting off topic they managed to tie everything together in a way where, you know, like, oh, now, okay, now we're just talking about Skid Row, if, like, get back to the murder. It all feels part of the fabric of the story they're telling. And that's, um, again, that's a real, that's a really good documentary. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess the point of this video is um, you should watch it. I said that up top, and I hope people check it out. Um, I've spoiled a lot of it now, um, which is a shame. Um, cool. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't know. I need to figure out an ending for these. That's... That's the end for this one, though, so thanks for listening.